In the 18th and 19th centuries, New London, Mystic, and other shoreline towns were home to numerous captains of whaling and merchant ships. It was a very honorable position to be known as the master of a vessel. And sometimes it didn't really matter whether you were the master of a small little fishing sloop or a large clipper ship, particularly in the mid-19th century. A lot of these men would grow up around the water. They would know about it. They would know how to sail by the time they were teenagers in many cases. The case of Captain Joseph Warren Holmes is a really typical example in many ways. He was born in Mystic, started as a cabin boy, and literally worked his way up through the ranks. He became a whaling master and then moved over to captaining clipper ships and other large merchant ships through the 19th century. Captain Holmes has the record for rounding Cape Horn more than any other sea captain in a square rigged ship. There was Captain Nathaniel Palmer of Stonington, Connecticut, for example, who discovered Antarctica in 1820 in a little sealing vessel called the Hero, built right in Mystic, Connecticut. Captain George Comer was the last of New London's whaling captains. He was born in Quebec in 1858. His father was lost at sea, and his mother couldn't support the children, and apparently he spent some time in an orphanage and then was placed out with a foster family in East Haddam, Connecticut, as a young boy, and lived in East Haddam for the rest of his life. At the age of 17, in 1875, he walked from East Haddam to New London and shipped out on a whaler. Over the next 44 years, only three years passed during which he didn't spend at least some time at sea. He sailed as captain or master of a ship for the first time in 1895. He specialized in Arctic whaling. A typical voyage would be 27 months, about 16 months of which would be spent in winter quarters when the ship was completely frozen in the ice and there was virtually no activity possible. I mean, they had to survive on everything that they brought with them and for fresh meat they obtained deer meat and salmon from the Inuit. In trade there would be a community of Inuit camped through the entire winter right near the vessel and they became part of the social activity and all of the activity during the winter season. Comer had an interesting relationship with the Inuit. He really developed an affection for them. He was also interested and became involved in Arctic exploration he collected for some of the great natural history museums, not just in the United States, but in the world, and became the leading authority in the world of the Inuit of the Hudson Bay region. Captain Comer retired from the whaling industry in 1912, but it wasn't the end of his career at sea. He participated in a couple of Arctic expeditions in association with the American Museum of Natural History. During World War I, he enlisted in the Navy, despite the fact that he was 59 years old made several cruises on board naval vessels. When he came back, he became involved in a trading and exploration venture, heading again for Hudson Bay. Went back one more time in 1919 at the age of 62. I think the primary reason he went back was because he wanted to visit his Inuit friends. He returned to East Tatum permanently at that point, was somewhat of a local celebrity, and died in 1937.